Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Harry Foster and Joel Lee. We're going to talk today about what some of the issues are coming up at DAC. So we've seen a lot of changes going in design. Moore's Law is starting to run out of steam. It's getting much harder to develop chips. It's getting a lot more expensive, even if you stay on this, the scaling curve. What's changing here, and what happens at DAC? What are you starting to see as the big changes going on? Well, this year we're certainly seeing the growth in terms of uh, AI uh, hardware architectural type submissions. Yep. Uh, I'll give you an example. In, in 2018, we had 56 submissions in that area. That grew to 92 uh, last year, and this year we have 194. Mm -hmm. and so just amazing. Um, also, I would like to say is, um, um, you know, while people say more solar are coming to the end, you know, but actually I'm still feel very excited. You know, every day in my life, you know, uh, which I'm, my background is more from a physical design, I still feel so the technology still advances. You know, actually, if I look at this year uh, keynote program, you know, we have a high level executives uh, from TSMC, from Samsung actually give us, you know, still how exciting the technology is, which I don't think the moral law is ending. And also there's another dimension here, you know, for example, 3D, you know, power, uh, AI, 5G, all those applications, uh, including automotive driving, of course, you know, I think uh, uh, keeping this area actually uh, really, really booming. So I actually think this is the golden time, you know, for the semiconductor and the area. Certainly for designers, because they've been stuck behind the restricted design rules for, what, decades here now, right, and getting tighter and tighter. Now suddenly everything's open. At the same time, we also have all these new technologies coming in that we didn't have before. You mentioned AI, but there's also AR. There's there's stuff going on in autonomous vehicles where you're starting to use some of the, all of those different technologies. How does that get reflected in what you're seeing? Well, we certainly see it reflected in terms of content. For example, uh, security is another area. Um, the, the, what happened to DAC, if you went back about 10 years ago, was that it started to expand beyond core EDA in terms of submissions. We did have autonomous systems. We had security. We mm -hmm. had embedded systems. And all these areas are, are just uh, just exploding in terms of growth. And, and, and that's reflected in the overall submissions this year for, for research papers. In fact, you, one could argue that this is an exciting time in terms of research. Uh, uh, we're seeing this boom in research. I'll give you an example. We had 980, uh, 984 papers submitted this year, yep. which was 20% increase over the last year. This was the largest submissions ever at DAC. We also had to put together the largest TPC to address this. But my main point here is that we're just seeing this explosion and excitement in terms of research that's going on at the moment. Uh, exactly, just like Harry mentioned, you know, and to me, if we look at like actually the component growth rate, you know, compared to two years ago, actually we're forty six percent more content, you know, so that's if we counted that's like a you know more than twenty percent average growth. I think now the DAC, you know, growing from a core foundation EDA is really vertically, we look at the whole ecosystem now. You know, that's why, you know, we have now the eight focus area at the DAC where you see all the different applications built on this foundation and have such a, you know, overall intelligent kind of system, you know, concept going on. I think that's really about uh, exciting. One of the big challenges facing designers is that a lot of the designs that we're seeing are for very splintered markets. A lot of them are sort of one-offs and not in the same kind of volume that we've seen in the past. How are we starting as an industry to address this? What are you starting to see as changes in terms of interest among the designers, uh, in terms of the tools that are going out there, what has to happen with them as well? Um, so I think on one side, you know, um, you know, I think for lots of designers, one big change is I think for the uh, tool chain, right? You know, now. Uh, even, even I look at the EDA ecosystem, you know, it's now the, uh, just a, like 1.2, you know, at the other one. You actually do need to look at this from a system level point of view. For example, you know, people grow from the uh, traditional, you know, um, digital now, you know, we put it all the mixing together, we even now grow to the, you know, system on chip, and we look at the 3D. So I think, you know, on one side, there's more uh, challenges. You know, people need to look at the similar problem. People need to look at the uh, EM issues all together. Uh, but on the other side, I think, you know, with the growing trend and then technology getting more mature, you know, uh, part of the cost, especially for the mature technology, goes down. And that's actually helped the designers also easier to go through their process. Yeah, so there has been a radical change that's occurred, and that's really the explosion of requirements that, have, that have, are going on, essentially. Uh, you know, it's no longer, from my uh, area of background verification, 
pure verification, you gotta con be concerned about clocking, about uh, security, about safety, uh, all these other requirements are just stacking uh, up and that's, that's uh, driving challenges now. So engineers basically are no longer just narrowly focused. They have to uh, have expertise across all these uh, disciplines. Software is playing a bigger role in all this too now because now you're dealing with designs that have to, particularly with AI, you need the software and there is the algorithms. How is that affecting what's being designed here and what's happening at DAC? Uh, I think that's a, that's a wonderful question. I think the software hardware co-design concept, which of course by itself is not new, but it definitely I think become popular. And that's another reason I think why the whole embedded system and the software, you know, that if you look at that particular track at the DAC, you know, not only the research and the designer track and IP track and other things. And actually this year, uh, we changed the name for designer IP to be designer IP and embedded track. So I think there's a lot of going on and, and you're absolutely correct, especially if I use AI as an example, right? Uh, I think even the new hardware designs is because people understand uh, the software application. We understand uh, how the part of the software algorithm works. That's how you can design the specific uh, hardware, you know, or people sometimes call it like a domain specific architecture. That's really what can get the best benefit and actually one of the dri uh, driving faults, I think now, you know, uh, for, the whole, uh, for the whole area. Yeah. Another big change is that the companies that are developing the most advanced chips tend to be systems companies now, as opposed to in the past they were buying their chips off the shelf, now they're actually creating them for whatever they actually need. Uh, so we, we see a broad spectrum of, of uh, new, new people participating actually in the conference, some Google, Facebook, and, and Amazon, the, the usual suspects. So that's, that's exciting too. It, it brings new, new uh, a talent into DAC. Yeah. And, and also I think uh, just a uh, you know, back to what I just mentioned, I think the reason system companies show up also because they have also the advantage because they know the software side, they know the hardware side, they actually also directly has application. So also good to show up the uh, ecosystem. So I think this again, you know, bring to a new, um, you know, era now. And it's very exciting because you've got a traditional uh, pure design companies, so you've got a system companies. So everybody, you know, all in this uh, um, wonderful, nice uh, playground, which I think, uh, you know, this is exciting. I think the key message there though is that DAC has evolved particularly over the last 10 years. And the evolution is we're no longer narrowly focused on core EDA. It has expanded. It has expanded into design. It has expanded into security autonomous systems. And all these, sure, they, they're tied into the core EDA, but we have expanded in terms of participation as well as uh, research. And it's also changed the relationship between some of the EDA companies and their customers too, right? So you think about now we're running EDA in the cloud. The cloud guys are also developing their own chips and hosting those tools. So now they see both sides of this. What sort of changes is that uh, causing here? To me, this also means just more and more partnership, you know, uh, across which people traditionally think, okay, they may not really relate it, but now you can see the system companies, you know, the cloud companies, the service companies, the EDA companies, design companies, this big ecosystem, I think that's uh, great about it. You know, and it's the, lots of a partnership here. Yeah, in fact, uh, it, we think it's so important that we actually added uh, executive committee chair to, to actually uh, help manage yeah. this in terms of the conference this year, first time. There are some new technologies that are showing up as well. I think about things like uh, printed electronics, which didn't even really uh, hit the radar screen going back a couple of years ago. How's that starting to filter in, those kinds of, of new, really new uh, leading edge type of technologies? Uh, I think that's a, a great question. I think as a back end of people, right, you know, there are always a, a research and study uh, look for the next things, you know, for the emerging devices, uh, you know, emerging interconnect technologies, uh, what beyond the CMOS. I think that's always um, very exciting. You know, we have a, a great research community continue to doing those kind of things and to try to predict ahead. And like you said, some of the techniques, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, become a more mature and some are like we're still in the research stage. So to me, those kind of like a pipeline things, you know, uh, in the horizon, that's I think are good about it, you know, so because while at the one side we're trying to uh, still make sure we got the best benefit from CMOS, look at the, all the, you know, system and even 3D dimensional, those kind of a pipeline research, that's actually very, very important for this field uh, to make sure we continue to grow, you know, in the next, uh, um, you know, I think 50 years. In the past, looking back over the past 10 years or, and even beyond that, almost all of design was really focused on the ASIC and the SOC, which was some sort of version of an ASIC. As things change, as they start, as we start moving into all these different uh, new markets and all these different protocols that are coming out, you can't really develop an ASIC because it may be outdated in 
six months or a year, the algorithms are changing all the time, the uh, fundamental market dynamics are changing all the time. What does that do for DAC? Actually, I, I went back to what I mentioned, like uh, this amount, like a uh, domain specific. So the, 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 the good thing now is we, like you said, it used to be ASIC and SOC driving the things, but we now actually see more kind of a different application, you know, part of the chips, you know, like uh, those are the uh, domain specific computing. So I think for the traditional ASIC, of course, one thing we need, you know, the tool needs to be really advanced enough because everybody has a, such a short time to market pressure. And you really cannot just like all the days, like, okay, take two years or years to design a chip because like you said, and then that's quickly got to, you know, out of dated. So I think there's definitely still a need there, but then we need to, you know, there's definitely put a high bar and a requirement for the uh, tool and the uh, ecosystem chain. On the other side, I think uh, there's, uh, uh, you know, many other now uh, different kind of areas of the uh, chips pop up, for example, more companies design their own CPUs, you know, GPUs, and also uh, you got companies uh, working on those uh, AI chips, and sometimes uh, for very special application because they still see a, a big market there, you know, given the needs, and sometimes those chips can be put into a system and under the service. So there's a little bit of a different model for that, and I think all of that it just shows, you know, the chip business is booming with all the different architectures, and that actually drives the bigger growth of the EDA and of course the DAC itself. Yeah. As we start moving into the world of chips and chiplets, what changes from the design side? Uh, that's a wonderful question. I mean, chiplet definitely got a lot of popular recently. I think chiplet uh, uh, bring another demo, uh, dimension because uh, people can quickly develop the things, potential shorten the design cycle, and uh, quickly you can you know move several chiplets together, uh, and then with the different combinations. So I think uh, this uh, uh, new thing is you know I think it's a, a good uh, a new kind of trend in the industry, and I would think you know, we should uh, bless it and watch it and then see how this can change our ecosystem. But it's clearly a way, I think, of, you know, a way to quickly reduce the design cycle and lower the cost and for the people to come, you know, with the new ideas on the uh, design side. Yeah, so I mean, in, in theory, it should simplify the functional verification aspect of it. Uh, of yes. course, uh, it, what really happens is we move the challenge up to the next level in terms of system validation and, and there's, uh, I, I view a lot of opportunities in that area for uh, new solutions. Chloe, Harry Foster, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.